Hello, friends, and welcome. We've got a lot to cover today, uh, lots of connections and some updates. So let's go ahead and do as is our custom and take a look at what the Word of God has to say. Lord Jesus, please show us amazing and revealing things in your Word. Okay, Proverbs. We've got Proverbs 31. Um, I've got one verse circled here. And it says, she gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. Um, I'm actually a little at a loss, but this could be telling us how important it is for us to prepare, not only for ourselves, but also for our loved ones in these coming days. Now, as you can see from the title of this video, the fifth seal is opening today, January 7th, 2022. So what does this mean? There is a lot in the news going on. And before I get too far, I just want to show you another page, uh, God's Messenger. I don't know this person personally. Um, I can't say that I agree with the views of any one uh, person. But he does post a lot of information about events going on around the world. Uh, today, Citigroup will terminate unvaccinated workers by January 31st, for a first among Wall Street banks here in the USA. That was CNBC, um, another one that he had posted uh, after Macron declared war on his unvaccinated French citizens EU nations like Italy, Austria, and Greece now mandating COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, a couple more of some earthquakes that are in South Carolina. They're not sure how this is happening. I don't believe that they are on a known fault line, such as the New Madrid fault line. Uh, Dutch Sense, I'll have that uh, channel linked. He, he goes over that. In great detail. Uh, Kazakhstan, Kazakh leader ordered use of lethal force on terrorists amid anti government protests. And there's, yeah, Moscow, uh, a lot of involvement there with Russia. So, you know, things to keep your eye on. I'll have this channel linked in our description below. Uh, other things, we're going to talk a little bit about. Christopher Reeve today. And I'm sure you're like, what in the world? Well, who else do you know that was famous who had a mortal head wound? Or not, in this case, it wasn't mortal. Uh, and it was more along the neck area. Uh, but let's talk about this event coming up here with Comet Leonard. Let's go into full screen mode. Comet Leonard is over here by the southern fish, uh, this bird called Groose, and Microscopium. But even though we've looked at this before, he's this comet is heading right toward the hooves of Sagittarius the archer. Before it goes into the crown area. Excuse uh, Stellarium for all that jumping around, but I think this is very significant. Uh, and Christopher Reeve was the only person that I could think of that had some sort of high profile accident related to horses. If you can think of another one, please let us know in the comments below. So I thought, well, what if any association does Christopher Reeve, who, who some of the some of us older people know, played Superman uh, in the I, I guess it's, it was the first rendition. So I did a search uh, for Christopher Reeve and Obama, and I was, and I also wanted to know if he was related to Keanu Reeves. He's not; they spell their names different. Uh, but Christopher Reeve was somehow associated with Obama. Uh, Barack Obama pays tribute to Christopher Reeve, uh, the Paralysis Act signed by 
President Obama. And I was going through this Wikipedia page. Uh, there is a section on his equestrianism industry. And if you want to pause and take a look, you're more than welcome to do that. What I found interesting was he started writing while filming a movie called Village of the Damned. That looks a little creepy there. Uh, the day of his, well, let me see. Down here it says, though Reeve had originally signed up to compete at an event in Vermont, his coach invited him to go to the Commonwealth Dressage and Combined Training Association finals at the Commonwealth Equestrian Center in Virginia. So he was supposed to go to one event. He had been training for a particular event, and then it sounds like, you know, not maybe not last minute, but kind of in a, uh, a way he was invited to an event that he wasn't prepared for. So that was interesting. Um, his first and second vertebrae, again, right next to the head, uh, cervical spinal injury, uh, is what paralyzed him from the neck down. So these are some things that jumped out to me as we are looking at the rise of the Antichrist. Uh, this injury, if you know there is an association here, may occur early May. This is going to be after Passover. Passover this year is April, begins April 15th. So going back to today, let's take a look at the sun, which is in conjunction with Venus. Now, let's briefly go over what some of our seals are and how they are connected with our astronomy. And in order to do that, let's actually, let's look at chapter one. I've got us at chapter four, but you know how I like to take everything in context. Uh, if you want to pause, you are more than welcome again to do that. What I'm going to do is take us down to verse 16, where it says, and he had in his right hand, uh, speaking of Jesus, seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So we have a clue here that the sun strengthens things. Just think about Mario Brothers, and when they caught that little star, they just powered up. Same thing. All right, so let's jump back to chapter four of the book of Revelation we're going to introduce you to the four living creatures. And again, go ahead and pause this as you like. This is chapter four. We do have a graphic to go along with this, and uh, we're going to look at that. Uh, but here we see, um, you know, we've got the throne of God, lightnings and thundering, a sea of glass like unto crystal. What does crystal do? Sparkle. What do our stars do? They sparkle. They shine. Uh, in the midst of the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Well, I don't think that this is literal. The eyes are representative of stars. Remember that the book of Revelation was written in code. Okay, and in verse 7, we have a description of the first beast. Uh, he was like a lion, the second like a calf, the third had a face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. So we've got four different constellations that meet these descriptions. They're not in order, that I can tell. Uh, but if, you, if you have other ideas, please share them below. Um, these four beasts also have the ability to praise God and rest not day and night. So we're going to throw up a graphic. Uh, we've got the 24 elders here that can also be symbolic of the 24 viewing segments by which we view space. And jumping over to that graphic 
just again, if you want to pause it, uh, the emerald rainbow, I think I skipped over, but that uh, describes the throne of God and may refer to the aurora borealis or the northern lights. Okay. So jumping back to the book of Revelation, we're going to head over to chapter 6 and talk a little bit about the horsemen. And we are also going to look at Matthew 24 because we are coming into the time of the tribulation of neighbor reporting neighbor, mother-in-law going against uh, daughter-in-law, father against son. That's what we are coming into now. And as you saw with those news headlines, um, that is our current trajectory. So as we've studied in the past with the white horse, um, and we've got videos on each and every one of these chapters, if you would like a deeper description. In the previous chapter, chapter five, we were introduced to the lamb who is worthy of opening these seals. And in chapter six, verse one, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. So you're going to see with these first four seals that there is going to be the introduction of a beast and then there will be the powering up, if you will, of the judgment. Now, in Matthew 24, excuse me, I'm going to pause you and jump over there now. Okay, we're going to focus down here on verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, so rumors of wars, that's kind of where we are right now, and that is a good description of the beginning of the second seal, the second horseman. The other thing I wanted to point out before we get too into it, too far into it, isn't that amazing? I, it just clicked for me that we are looking at Sagittarius, the horseman, which we have in the past. But isn't that somewhat ironic that Comet Leonard is heading for perhaps a, a mortal head wound with a horseman? I, that just clicked for me. But I'm not surprised because God brings things together in ways that we're just never going to understand in our personal lives as well as in his word. So the thing that I really wanted to point out in verse 2 is that, and I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And this give us, gives us an idea that this is somewhat of a protracted judgment. We are conquering and to conquer. There's some time that's going on here for this to be completed. Now, when we look at the second horseman, we're going to see that at some point, peace is going to be taken from the earth. Now, just as we saw with the first horseman, conquering and to conquer, this didn't mean that peace or that we would be conquered that day. So let's go ahead and take a look at our graphic, our second graphic. Here we have all, how all of that played out with the white horseman, Jupiter, the white king planet, uh, Aquila, the face of an eagle constellation called Jupiter out. November 2019, and then the sun went into conjunction with Jupiter right in Sagittarius again. This horseman is given a bow. Sagittarius is the only constellation that I know of that has, has a bow and a crown. Same thing, only constellation with a bow and a crown. So for that to match up, it was a miracle. 
and I mean with the sun and Jupiter, but this also happened when COVID was released. So that was a really big deal, a huge confirmation. Uh, Mars the Red Horseman uh, was called out by Taurus during Passover of 2021, the first time that Mars had been in Taurus since uh, Jupiter was in or under Aquila in Sagittarius in no November, December 2019. So we're looking at chronology here. Uh, by and large, the book of Revelation is written in chronology. Although it's not a novel, there's too many variables. Uh, it is giving us a good idea of the order of events that happen for each character. Again, it's not a novel. We're not going to see a lot of interplay, but we are seeing some of the character developments and happenings. So when Israel and Palestine had their big skirmish during Passover, Mars was in Taurus. And then it went into conjunction with the sun in September under our dagger here, our sword. But the Greek word is actually dagger right under the sword conjunction with Mars and the sun. I mean, you can't make this up. Uh, the black horse, the black planet Mercury, and I'll let you go through the rest of this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on. Uh, so just as we saw with Matthew 24, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Uh, there will also be um, earthquakes in diverse places, I believe. Uh, if we jump down here to verse 7, it's going to go on to talk about famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Also, we do have a warning about the Antichrist and not to be deceived. And that echoes true today. Let no man deceive you. Our relationship has got to be directly plugged in to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And digging into the book of Revelation has helped me so much with that. And when I'm not digging in here with you, if I'm just looking at the stars and not getting into the word, I notice a difference. I notice a big difference. Um, so let's go ahead and continue just reading this portion of Matthew 24 to let you know that there will be rumblings. It doesn't have to be, you know, one and done sort of thing. Peace isn't taken from the earth right away. Uh, the famine and economic collapse, for whatever reason, didn't happen the day that the corresponding planets went into conjunction with the sun or were called out by their living creatures. But significant things have happened on those days. And we are now up to the happenings of the fifth seal, and that's where we are today. The U.S. Supreme Court is hearing um, the opening arguments, I suppose you would call them, for the Biden vaccine mandates. And it looks like some places are already letting people go who have not received the injection. Uh with my company, we have until February 9th to either, you know, claim our status as injected or um, they, it, will def it will default to not injected. And then we'll have to do weekly tests. Well, hopefully those tests can be processed. I mean, people have been complaining about not being able to board airplanes because they don't get their tests back in time because there is a backup, well, how conducive is our current system to, you know, hundreds and thousands of new tests every week? It's hard to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So keep in prayer on these things. Uh, pray, you know, if you should start looking for a new job or trying to find a smaller company to work with. Who knows? Even cleaning, you know whatever it takes uh, to do what you have to do for yourself, for your family, stay in prayer because God's going to provide. And you are exactly where you need to be at this moment. 
he has all things lined up and he does have the right connections for you in the right time. And the, that time might be sooner than we think. Uh, so what's going to happen at this point? Well, we've spent a lot of time in the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 6, chapter 12. But let's look at uh, Matthew 24. It's going to talk about the tribulation of those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And when I saw that the fifth seal would be opened in winter on the Sabbath day, Friday night here, um, I guess we haven't been doing enough praying. <laughs> and that's probably very true. Um, we also say, uh, see in verse 21, for then shall be great tri tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Friends, when people say that there's no way, way we are in the tribulation, well, they're just not awake because we are heading into the time of, you know, when people are going to be betraying each other. That is the fifth seal. That is the fifth seal. Uh, and then more warning about false Christs, false prophets. YouTube is full of them. Always pray for discernment over every word you get. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, so, I went ahead and I jumped up a little bit because I, I just wanted to keep everything in context. Verse 7, uh, we saw nation rising against nation, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Then, okay, it's in order. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Okay, we're coming into that. And shall kill you. <clears throat> and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Okay. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise. They're in the churches right now. The, most churches are getting money from the states and they are being influenced not only by the states, but whomever influences the state. Uh, verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. I'm going to stop there. Um, it's hard to say if this is directly applicable today as much as it was in the years following Jesus's death when this abomination did occur for the first time in the Jewish temple. Uh, definitely stay in prayer. I understand that it can be hard to talk to people about these things because most of the time they don't want to hear it. But at the same time, do be wise in terms of where you should be. Uh, we're going to continue down because what I want to look at uh, is when it talks about the darkness. So one, oh, I think it's in 29. Okay, so immediately after the tribulation of those days, and I believe it's still referring to you know people being handed over to be delivered those days shall be 
shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So jumping back to verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Okay, we see that with the, the sixth seal, the moon shall not give her light. There might be another light source that the moon would be reflecting. It's hard to say. There's a an eclipse of some sort, which is, is what it sounds like. Um, this our moon could be, you know, getting light reflected off of another planet, another planet's atmosphere. Um, and the stars shall fall from heaven. Okay, that sounds like seventh trumpet, excuse me, seventh seal first trumpets, you know, first through fourth trumpets. So we can definitely see these things happening soon. Uh, if we jump back over to our timeline, and I'll make this a little bigger. We're looking at anywhere between March with the sixth seal and May with the seventh seal, we could even go into the summer with the trumpets. Uh, and if you do remember, we had just talked about May 1st, early May with that perhaps accident head wound that would be inflicted on the antichrist ironically by our First Horseman constellation of Sagittarius. Again, do keep these things in prayer. Okay, so this is where we're going to wrap things up. In fact, I will share a dream before I forget. I meant to in the last video, but I shared a couple others instead of the one that I'm thinking of. Um, we have talked about the war in heaven in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation and also discussed how that heaven can be interpreted as atmosphere or skies. Uh, my dream kind of reflects that. And I believe that this is going to go down to... Oh, I passed it. Uh, the war in heaven with Michael. All right, here, verse seven. In my dream, what I remember was very brief, but I could see the war in heaven taking place. And actually, it kind of looked like one of the constellations. We really haven't discussed it, um, but this constellation right here of the ship. This boat is kind of on its side here. Um, but it was like, I saw a sh an old, you know, time ship from like the 1600s or something with a huge mass. In fact, I believe that there were two of them, one behind me and one to my left. And I believe I was facing North. They, we're in the skies, not like um, like how we would physically characterize them or think of them, but they looked like very well-defined, ghostly, cloud-like objects. But then I look over to my right, kind of north and east. There's a big sub submarine. I mean, humongous, humongous. And again, just kind of a bluish, grayish, cloudy covered, 
whatever, not covered, but a, a sort of a silhouette. Thank you, Lord, a sort of a silhouette. And when I thought about it after waking, I realized, well, that's kind of the direction where Russia is from where I am in, you know, the United States of America. So I'm hoping that that is not a comparison of our military abilities at this particular moment. I don't know. Um, or it could be just kind of a symbology of how the United States, States might be surrounded uh, from the West, well, the far West, that would be China, the South, Mexico, you know, something could be happening there, I don't know. Uh, but that really solidified the notion for me that, yeah, part of the war in the heavens that Michael will be involved in is, you know, these terrible atmospheric conditions that are happening all over the world. I mean, we're getting blizzards in the Western United States. There are, you know, I believe hundreds of thousands of people without power. And in fact, I should look that up just to make sure. All right. So I did look and it's not as bad as it was earlier in the week. Uh, so praise God for that. Um, but these are just the times that we are coming into. We've got to be ready. If we're in denial in terms of how far into the tribulation we actually are, we're not going to be ready. Um, and in fact, I was looking at the book of Jasher. I'm going to pause you for a second. Okay, so this is ja Jasher, the book of Jasher, 79. Jasher is not the name of a person. It is, um, I believe, translated. It can be in... Um, the book of light. Uh, verse 19 from chapter 79. And Moses and Aaron came to Egypt to the community of the children of Israel. And they spoke to them all the words of the Lord. And the people rejoiced and exceeding great rejoicing. And Moses and Aaron rose up early on the next day. And they went to the house of Pharaoh. And they took in their hands the stick of God. And the book of Jasher is really fascinating because it has stories that we don't have in our regular Bible that's been sanitized. Um, but this next portion speaks a little bit about a story of two lions who, rather than attack Aaron and Moses, they basically came up to him and rejoicing, wanting to play. But the real reason that I want to point this out to you is that when we go into the next chapter, okay, we see it says, and at the end of two years, the Lord again sent Moses to Pharaoh to bring forth the children of Israel and to send them out of the land of Egypt. And yes, I did say two years. So if these judgments take place in, you know, the, the hard part of them, Jacob's uh, trouble, well, we'll say the first half being Jacob's sorrow, the second half being Jacob's trouble. Um, I don't think anybody should be offended by that. I don't think anybody should be upset uh, that that is a possibility that Armageddon would come towards the end of 2024, you know, three, two and a half years from the real wrath of God when we we really see his judgments falling, which, you know, as we see in the book of Matthew, that could happen after, excuse me, after the tribulation of those days with the beginning of martyrdom. And some people aren't going like, to like to hear that, uh, but it does need to be considered at some point. Watchmen, please share these things on your ch your channel because I believe that, especially with this tilt of looking at the signs and the stars, um, this isn't something that's being shared and should be considered uh, deeply and seriously. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what God leads us to. Ezekiel 23. And I don't have anything underlined here, uh, but there is a bit of a song here. I will look at, uh, starting with, uh, so this is chapter 23, verse 32. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You will drink 
of your sister's cup, a cup large and deep. It will bring scorn and derision, for it holds much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, the cup of ruin and desolation, the cup of your sister Samaria. You will drink it and drain it dry. You will dash it to pieces and tear your breasts. So Samaria was the northern kingdom. Uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah are letters written to, not letters, but accounts related to the southern kingdom by and large. So what the southern kingdom, Judah, had said, seen and witnessed with the northern kingdom they would experience themselves. Um, and we're kind of running into that today where what the Southern, or excuse me, what has been experienced in times past will be experienced again today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the book of Jasher, the book of Jubilee, when we look at Noah, what does the Bible be when it says, you know, as in the days of Noah, it sounded like it was pretty good. Well, you know, humankind did pr do pretty well until Enoch was taken away. And then things really started to go downhill. Uh, and we we're going to talk about what eating and drinking meant at that time. And was Noah persecuted? We're going to look at that as well. You know, when people say, oh, the bride isn't, you know, ordained to wrath, there's never been a martyr. I mean, where are they getting this? So we're going to talk about that. Uh, God, thank you so much. Let us hear the truth and receive it and discuss it in a way that honors you, Lord, because this is where we are. We've got to get real. We've got to get ready. And we want to surround ourselves with those who are alive and awake and want to stay that way, um, please open those doors. We put our trust in you. We're not going to worry or fear. It's just going to be your doing. And we thank you for these things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless.